Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tony Joseph, uh, for inviting me. Thank you, Mayur, and thank you, Hormone India. Excellent conference. So, uh, I will just deal with the uh, uh, scientific topic, which is Turner syndrome and how to induce puberty in this condition. We already got through the approach of delayed puberty. So, I will just rush through how we conceptualize this topic. February is the month where uh, Turner syndrome awareness globally is, uh, is kind on, and this is a symbol of uh, the crimson ribbon. It's a symbol of Turner syndrome awareness, highlighting that this condition needs to have a registry itself, and India is also going through these things. So then a case capsule, how, how many challenges, how can you face the challenges, how to induce the puberty optimally, and how to counsel the patients on follow-up. So, uh, Dr. Vijay Sarathi dealt with approach to puberty. Puberty is rather a continuum and there is a physiological process which occurs. And the teenage time is a crude terminology from 13 years to 19 years, whereas puberty is a technical term used for the physical and endocrine changes in this period. Adolescent is again a profound psychological change which encountered during this time. As this graphic you can see here, adolescent period is just like a barren land. There is an unclaimed territory where the physician, the pediatrician, the gynecologist all delve into. And of course, endocrinology stands as one of the major person who can help the transition period also. You can see the physiology of puberty. Before I go into Turner syndrome, remember that these all many hormones regulate the type of puberty which goes through. There is a neuroendocrine control which was established in the 1900s. As time went on, various other uh, channels were discovered and treatment was also uncovered. And we can see that GPR54 kisspeptin genes are described for this, uh, this, this gatekeeper of puberty. So this is a scientist, Henry Turner, who described the Oklahoma physician who described the, the condition 1938. So the puberty, which usually takes off like a rocket, is actually delayed and the females exclusively affected in the uh, teenage period and they can be diagnosed early if some clues are identified. So growth velocity is one of the easier tools as Dr. Ganesh Javalikar has alluded to you that growth charts are to be used in every clinic, in every pediatrician and every endocrinology clinic. So definitely area of suspicion is to be taken into mind when velocity is not happening. There is a Turner syndrome specific chart which captures the high velocity also. Let us through, go through a case capsule. A 15-year-old girl from Kolkata, this case was donated to me by Dr. Sunetra Mundal, one of our great experts in endocrine awareness. So this girl presented at 14 years of age with primary amenorrhea and there was a minimal progression of secondary sexual characters and some clinical clues are also shown here, which I will just describe to you. So Tanner's staging was done. So the breast was just developed and pubic hair just developed and there was no other axillary hair. So there was spontaneous thilarchy six months back, that is the age of 13 and a half years. This girl came to Dr. Sunetra at, at the age of 14 years. At the time, diagnosis was very clear to them and they were concerned about the puberty aspect. But as an endocrinologist, we know that we should also address the height aspect. She was only around 135 centimeter when she came at the age of 14 years and there was grossly inadequate, the corresponding less than third centile for that chart. There was cubitus valgus brachymetatarsal algium, and you can see the low posterior hairline. There was also cardiac evaluation done, which revealed a bicuspid aortic valve, primary hypothyroidism, which was treated. So, which was adequately managed initially with recombinant growth hormone, because, because we know that we have to initiate estrogen only when we have get an adequate height, because estrogen can cause the fusion of the epiphyseal end, and which is why we should ideally start growth hormone before giving estrogen therapy. So uh, the early diagnosis is important and one of the best measures is the karyotyping. So this karyotype which was seen 45 XO as well as uh, another different type of karyotype was also seen in that case. So this is a typical uh, case scenario which we can go through and uh, this is the description, the short stature, a delayed puberty, typical facial features of ptosis, hypertelorism, micrognathia. We all know this in genetics but we should remember that there are other other conditions, systemic issues which can occur, that is the cardiovascular, genitourinary and other, other things, thyroiditis and web neck hearing loss are other things which go along with it. So definitely the foundation of the talk is establishing a good diagnosis and this is done by a framework of history, physical examination and growth charts. Of course, bone age is very important to be captured, salient labs, 
and finally the advanced imaging and genetic studies offer definitely the timely referral to the pediatric endocrinologist or the endocrinologist definitely merited when you have a case of turner syndrome this sunetra mandal group definitely had also described a karyotype phenotype correlation in turner syndrome at a single center in western india so you can see that there is a good variation in the karyotype the changes ring chromosome can be there isochromosome can be there so in, in india definitely the delayed presentation is very common and the mean age is around 14 and 0.8 years primary amenorrhea is the most common feature and height definitely has to be addressed in each case of turner syndrome and the reason why this occurs is there is an epigenetic abnormality coupled with the abnormal gene expression and this ultimately leads to other systemic issues also then regarding pu puberty in turner syndrome the lack of two completely normal x chromosome leads to accelerated follicle loss because of the um, without viable follicles this ovary doesn't produce adequate estrogen and progesterone and there is a, a, there is a lack of spontaneous breast develop and development so approximately 10% of girls have spontaneous development the majority is definitely not having that so this is this this um, spontaneous puberty development is seen more among the mosaic turner than the this which is in our case so majority of turner syndrome will require a induction with estrogen therapy and 2 to 5 percentage of them definitely have even menarche prior to uh, ovarian failure so which is the reason why premature ovarian failure is one of the reasons where we have to definitely address in these conditions the same author group also published a, a journal publication regarding heterogeneity of karyotype this is a cohort of population 136 is a high number and we can see that a large number of person 42% are 45 xo and there are also some iso chromosome mosaic chromosome and even rare complex chromosome types have been described so what are the indicators of natural puberty onset there is a normal range of fsh and amh are the reasons where we can identify so when we know that around the age of 10 years age the follicles are not properly going into that range so they go into the menopausal range and amh can be undetectable and pelvic ultrasound may show no evidence of ovaries that is streak ovary like appearance and an immature uterus so like infantile uterus they always come in so these are the candidates which require puberty induction in a timely manner and maintenance therapy with estrogen progesterone combination So the guidelines for my talk has been taken from the Cincinnati meeting International Turner Syndrome done in 2016 and this publication is a very large volume which describes the Turner Syndrome clinical practice guidelines so considerations for optimal puberty are to provide an age appropriate telarchy or breast growth a, a near normal pubertal progression and menarche adequate uterine volume for future fertility with artificial reproductive techniques giving a proper height outcomes responsive to gh therapy the three other things which are very important are the psychosocial the bone health and the metabolic parameters which definitely are a very important for the endocrinology perspective what is the logic for the timing of growth hormone or the other therapies we should definitely give them a good benefit regarding the body composition and metabolic profile we should give them an adequate uterine size which can be near adult should avoid the cylindrical or the other uteruses and psychosocial development has to be ensured just like the peers and the delayed puber delayed initiation of the estrogen is done only when you have to give a proper health height utility for these individuals coming to the practice guidelines they recommend that estrogen therapy should start at around 11 to 12 years of age increasing to the adult dosing around the 2 to 2 years age time they are advocate the chance by systemic route and transdermal is what preference we know india transdermal route is not available and not affordable in majority and definitely we should add progesterone once the breakthrough bleeding occurs or after 2 years of estrogen therapy this is what the guidelines tells you and this is the um, pubertal sequence which occurs in the female this is the breast bud appearing the menarche occurs around 2 to 3 years after that the pubic hair parallelly occurring the height spurt occurs in the mid range so we can see that around 12 years to 13 years is the peak time when the bone acquisition also occurs this is the time where estrogen therapy definitely has to be occurring in the peak time so the age of initiation has to be kept around this period to maximize the growth potential low dose will be required because the proper breast shape the the uterine size and the volume can be ensured 
and menarche once is attained progesterone is added and that is the reason why we should do in a synchrony the aim is to give a benefit on the endogenous estrogen levels to give healthy fat distribution and bone mineralization while minimizing the risk of the estrogen like complications like gynecological cancers and the thrombogenic complications in the past we have had very limited choices like equine estrogen pregnant marine uterus like primarin and the highly potent synthetic ones like is ethanol estradiol fortunately last couple many years we are also having estradiol valrate which is also very useful for our population the principle of induction is similar to produce effects like normal puberty start at a low dose of 1/4 to 1/8 of the adult dose and increase very slowly among the months to years and to reach the maximum full dose around 2 to 4 years i will tell about the dose but initial period should be a, a very dominant estrogenic effect without interference from progesterone because once progesterone effect occurs the the the, the estrogen effect does not properly get into and we should definitely discourage the use of combined ocps in this regard the disadvantage of fast induction is that there is a poor breast shape uterus development and a poor bone mass development so unopposed estrogen exposure is required and and we have other therapies like oxandrolone which have been used when we are using concomitant growth hormone therapy which is not available used in india but definitely this should be discontinued prior to estrogen treatment and progesterone should definitely delayed until the breast development is satisfactory so progesterone is necessary to suppress the estrogen's proliferatory effect and definitely it is only used after 2 years of unopposed estrogen treatment we should avoid chronic exposure to estrogen also because without monitoring the properly it can lead to endometrial hyperplasia and risk for hemorrhage and neoplasias this is the sequence which the cincinnati textbook has described sir lh fsh annually starting at the age of 11 years of age observe for the spontaneous puberty if it is not occurring definitely we should high fsh short estrogen therapy increase the dose every 6 monthly observing the breast and the bone age till the adult dose is reached around the 2 to 3 years i will describe the types and dose in the next slide so in this slide you can see the european journal publication as well as the indian publication the availability of the drugs oral estradiol valrate is 1 mg equivalent and you can see 17 beta estradiol is also available in some parts ethanol estradiol the the one which is definitely uh, used also very predominantly 10 micrograms the conjugated ones are not popular only for the priming purpose they are used in the growth hormone therapy type that is there is only you purpose we use them transdermal root is developed as a patch it contains 0.75 mg equivalent also gel is also available so these are the ways in which the initiation dose is described and adult dose is taken into so i can urge you to just take a look into this in the future presentation so the the use of estradiol, estradiol linoral tablet is 10 microgram or 50 microgram tablet this is the route by we use the european journal i was uh, hearing the the talk by dr rakesh that cut covered sir rajesh pointer he had told the aims experience aims telly by using this same regimen of using half tablet every alternate and finally going into the adult dose by around 2 years of this is a classic description in this table so transdermal estradiol is the more physiological route it avoids the first pass metabolism and comparatively is very useful and this is the publication which shows you that compared to the oral therapy there is a good adequate effect on the lipids liver enzymes and it's actually very good on the bmd as well so the, uh, the estrogen therapy is done then we should definitely add progesterone therapy the choice definitely is progesterone the availability is the oral micronized progesterone 200 mg taken in the last 10 to 12 days of the monthly cycle or the last 20 to 30 days of the tri monthly cycle the more androgenic ones like medroxy progesterone or norethrone and definitely are the ones which may inhibit the optimal breast and uterine development and definitely as any hormones we know require a annual examination of pelvis and regular breast examination when they go into adolescent a pap smear is also mandatory so cyclic uh, therapy is done every month for 10 days and based on this we can definitely find a less increase incidence when we give in the proper timely manner how to monitor them clinical is the best one biochemical tools are not recommended because they are not useful suppression of estrogen not adequate requirement when you attain a tana four breast definitely takes around 2.2 pi years and similar to that with spontaneous puberty time So oxandrolone just a word on it this is not used but definitely it can be used in some very rare conditions 
but uh, the guidelines say that only use from the age of 10 years or older and maintenance is also required so only use in the very short turner syndrome child until the estrogen therapy is initiated so clinical guidelines have shown that puberty induction by these uh, methods have provided uh, adequate effect and they provide a uh, very good results on the long term basis so developing into mature adult size is in a mature majority of 80% of cases by using a timely optimal induction and just like a normal girls the turner syndrome girls in this study provided a very good eye opener to this one so what happened to our young girl the 15 year old girl the mosaic chromosome so we can see that fsh levels were also high the ultrasound pelvis showing atrophic ovaries started on estradiol val rate 0.5 mg daily slowly increased till adult dose and recombinant dh was introduced initially and then discontinued later on as it showed a non fused epiphysis and finally we can see adult and uh, high uh, the height was achieved at 141 cm the breakthrough bleeding was uh, was achieved after 1.7 years by adding medroxyprednisone later on so the observations of these studies shows that we should definitely try to induce at the age appropriate which is why timely referral is the one which is mandated and monitor the growth and metabolic profile as well as the psychosocial and the bone health the lancet publication regarding the cancer incidence was showing that only the gonadotropin and brain cancers were increased and breast, breast cancer was definitely on the lower side when we give a proper timely therapy with monitoring so reproductive options because we know people are curious about this assisted reproduction tools but donor use sites with ivf has been successful and 2% of kinder syndrome can even have a spontaneous pregnancies high risk of maternal complications like aortic dilated dissection and rupture can be described which is the reason why cardiovascular mri should be done before we mandate this another case of missed opportunity had come when the 16 year old girl came with 138 cm with poor height no sexual characters and increased carrying angle and what to do with this child other than just sympathizing with the parents because we cannot give the proper therapy of course we can give only for the uh, the bone health we can give so initiation of growth hormone is also done ideally early and when we have a early failure uh, chances and we can give a near adult height by giving timely turner syndrome therapy with high dose of growth hormone so adult care is done by mandating with a team approach and gynecological evaluation cardiological follow up metabolic transition psychological approach definitely beyond the scope of this topic but definitely turner syndrome child definitely merits a great team effort this is the chart which gives you a summary of the ovarian hormone replacement therapy in turner syndrome and it should be continued up to the near the menopausal age as the the population standards indian scenario there are several hindrances to this as i had told you delayed presentation the majority don't receive growth hormone in the pre pubertal age transdermal estradiol not available but if it available cost factor even the oral estradiol variant is also costly and many girls still receive oral ocps for puberty induction which is the one not to be used definitely so when i just took this slide we can see that so many conditions of delayed puberty are there endocrine causes are very much minimal but when we point out to delayed puberty and short stature turner syndrome child is definitely one of the high in the list so the role of endocrine optimization metabolic reproductive social and also psychosocial and sexual therapy sexual optimization is also required which is the reason why we should reach out to the turner syndrome foundation and other societies to collaborate regarding this so i also welcome you to the endocrine awareness which is an initiative by the esi and also to my main uh, help from the dr sanjay kalrat and dr swani sunetra mondal uh, you can always reach out to me on my email and on my twitter handle thank you dr